Hello. Hello. Uh, welcome to one more live stream. Um, just finishing up uh, some marketing. <laughs> Advertising this live stream on some channels. Let me send to Elixir's Discord. Uh, right. Elixir. Share. What is it? So, all right, let me share my screen then. Cool. So, as for today, we're going to continue the work we've been doing on the past couple of live streams. Actually, the last one, to be really precise, uh, we are doing this. MVP project here on coins, which is this asset manager tool uh, for financial assets. And we are configuring tests and CI and other tools, actually, not just tests and CI. Uh, the, the best one, we opened this pull request here, tools, which we, I'll be adding more and more tools in this same pull request. So uh, basically, we had some trouble configuring CI, but uh, what we did for now, we did set up the CI, which you can see in here. We did uh, set Elixir version to 1.11 because one of the tools that we are using, which is, where is it? Muzak, this one. Oh, Xavier is here. Let me do remove that then. Um, Mix depths dot unlock Xavier. Uh, both Xavier and unlocking Xavier. Right, pushing. I'm not sure why I'm using the notebook <laughs> keyboard. So Xavier, which is not it here anymore on Mixlock, and Muzak are mutation testing tools and uh, uh, Muzak worked a little bit better, but only with Elixir 1.11. That's why we kind of downgraded our version to 1.11 instead of 1.12. Um, we did some testing and removed some some code that's actually not never used on the project because it got generated by Mix Phoenix New, but we're not using because we are using live views instead of dead views. So we don't need controllers and the router. We actually just moved it to the, the, the this code here to the plain router and the channel. We're not we don't have any channel yet, so only the live view uh, socket is initiated. So yeah, um, for today, I'm planning to add Credo and Dialyzer to the CI. Uh, but I do want to check one thing here, uh, because I did create two workflows but it looks like only one workflow is running. Like the tools workflow here is running, the, the, which is the, the pull request workflow, right? And there are some annotations. All right, it's a dependencies compilation probably. All right, uh, run tests. Yeah, plug, both are plug warnings. All right, all right, we did configure uh, the tests to run the, the coverage stuff, uh, like the, the test coverage stuff, like the line coverage in here. 
and we did configure another workflow to run Muzak, which is this task mix Muzak. And for those of you who don't know, Muzak is this thing I mentioned, mutation testing. And what mutation testing is, uh, basically, it mutates your code, your compiled code, and then it runs the tests. If no test failed, it means you're not actually testing that little thing that got mutated. So it means your tests are not good enough, right? So every for every F here, it means, hey, there was a mutation, a mutation happened, and we ran your whole suite again, and no test failed. So uh, you're, you're going to see right afterward, it actually prints all the mutations that failed. Uh, it can take a while, like in, in this project, it's not going to take that much time, but for big, big projects, it's going to take a, a considerable amount, uh, amount of time because for every mutation, it's going to run the whole test suite and the more and more your, uh, uh, your product grows, both the quantity of mutation is going to grow and the suite if you're actually testing it, right? So it's going to grow in execution time, the suite, and it's going to grow on the mutation quantity. So for, for now, only 181 mutations were generated and only one failed, which is quite good. But yeah, the, the one that failed is this transactions one here. Uh, if someone changes broadcast transactions to blah, 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 uh, no test is actually testing this, that the broadcasted uh, channel is transactions. So what we should do is to write a test that actually tests that the broadcast is actually called, right? So, but anyways, uh, we're not gonna focus on that now. We're gonna focus on installing the tools, right? So the next two I'm gonna install uh, all right, why did I mention this, right? Uh, the, the thing is I configured two workflows. One for uh, one is a uh, pull request CI workflow. And another one is this cron one that should run every day at noon. Every day at noon. And it's for some reason it's not running. I'm trying to use a feature from GitHub Actions called oh, let me here features. Uh, get started with actions. Um, reference events that trigger workflows. I want to trigger a workflow, for example, uh, uh, as schedule, right? This one, schedule events. So I want this to be the configuration of my workflow, which is what I have, right? Oops. Mm, schedule, cron. Mm. Or, actually, maybe, maybe even better, instead of, because right now I do have a PR, pull request CI, right? Mm, yeah, let's rename to pull request. So, what I'm going to do is instead of uh, dispatching it, this on pull request or push to master, I'm going to dispatch it only on pull requests and then dispatch this on push to master. Right? And that's it. Call it test because that's what it is. Yeah. So then when I merge the pull request, oh, actually, no. Maybe it's not going to be considered a push to master. Never mind. 
yeah, uh, I want to still execute this on a scheduled basis, like at least once a day, and it's not actually working, and I'm not sure why, why it's not triggering, right? Like select workflow, there's only the pull request CI workflow. I'm gonna configure a new workflow and uh, set up a workflow yourself, CI. And where is this gonna be saved? Like main YAML in master. Oh, that's why it actually didn't get executed because it's not a master yet. Let me merge. Like I can open another PR soon. Let me just open my Twitch stream here and my phone. Let me delete. Um, git checkout master, git pull. Right. Git checkout more tools. <laughs> All right. Oops. Minus B, origin, more tools. Oh, Mitchell Piki. Hey, hey. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I recognize you from Elixir Forum, by the way. Yeah, uh, you're pretty active there. Uh, I guess you helped me already a couple of times, uh, at least a couple of times, maybe more than that. So yeah, thank you for, for your activity there. It surely is really welcome. So, hey. Uh, yeah, 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 cool. I, I'm gonna apply dialyzer here. I'm not a dialyzer pro, by the way. Uh, I struggle with the warnings, <laughs> to be honest. But I really like the tooling there. And I kind of like that uh, Elixir is a dynamic ty dynamically typed language, but has this uh, other tool to actually check, uh, at least soft check, uh, typing on, on important stuff, you know? And yeah, the, the, actually, I'm kind of going to configure both Credo and, well, let me start with that, right? right. So Credo is this stuff here, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, it is basically a static code analysis tool and basically a linter, right? So it shows you a lot of warnings for your code and uh, it's pretty easily installed like this. Just add it to your mix exs file. I was almost getting lost at Muzak stuff there. Thankfully, I, I got it done. Uh, so, and then you mix depth get and run mix credo. It should be uh, warning me of some stuff, probably. Maybe not, because this, this project is brand new. I have uh, just two or three scaffolding stuff, and I did remove some code too. So, maybe there is some stuff that's gonna suggest. But, uh, all right. Yeah, uh, modules without module doc tag. So, but also, like th there's a lot there. But also what I do normally is to mix help credo. Let me check. Uh, uh, actually mix credo help. <laughs> Yeah, so what I'm going to do is to gen config, generate the config file for Credo, right? It's gonna be generated at my root. So this config file, it has uh, a lot of uh, the other checks that get run by default, they are configured here, but there are some here with false, right? That I really like them uh, uh, actually, most of them <laughs> I turn true. So what I'm going to do is to 
uh, first turn true for specs like this one uh, this check here uh, if I'm not mistaken it's gonna check all your public functions and if they don't have add spec defined for them it's gonna warn you right remember the rule not implement for atom wait what validate config credit execution task do run is it this task Is Cradle not working? Uh, validate config, validate checks. Yeah, let me check Cradle then. What's the file? Validate config. One if check missing, one if check params invalid. Oh, there's this configuration here is not all oh, right. I should it's written in here, right? I should change false to uh, empty list instead of true. Come on, Kevin. All right. So as you can see, I got 12 code readability issues before. But right now I get 49 code readability issues because uh, I generated a lot of a lot of stuff, and uh, this stuff none of them have the add spec specification, right? Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically uh, it. The the credit configuration is done, and I would like to actually fix all of them, but 49 that's a lot. <laughs> Uh, also, what I do here is strict. I do like to be very strict with my code. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit, I do have a little bit of OCD. So yeah, uh, the strict flag there, what's gonna say is uh, like every issue is important. So if there's any, uh, it doesn't matter the, the importance, uh, like how, how's the name, the level of, uh, of the the actual check because you can configure uh, configure the level of the check for for example uh, the priority yeah priority so if you configure priority high low if you, the strict option is there uh, it's only gonna print for a certain amount of priority up but strict is gonna print all of them so I do want to print all of them. Mm, software design suggestions. Uh, let me check. Nested modules could be aliased. Oh, on data case and con case. Um, all right, the sandbox here. Yeah. I do like to, to be this crazy guy, <laughs> but I mean, this is really not something that it's required. Uh, to, to be done, right? You could repeat yourself like this, but yeah, I think aliases do serve really well <laughs> in these cases. And yeah, done. The, the, the four software design suggestions should be gone, right? So yeah, a little bit of Cradle for you. Adding Cradle. Um, and what I'm going to do next is to add credit to the CI, actually workflows PR. So what I'm going to do is to run 
Fredo. So this is going to run Credo using the configurations I have there, which are the strict ones, which is going to make my 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 build fail. And yeah, I, I'm going to make it pass after I, I configure the other tooling. But yeah, running Credo on CI. Let's push this code and let's open a pull request called more tools. <laughs> right. And this is probably going to dispatch the check and the check is going to fail because of what I, I said to you. Uh, anyway, uh, what well, another thing I normally configure is the formatter check formatted. So the f formatter has this mix format two, right? If I run it, it's gonna format my my code. As you can see, there are two lines here, and that got changed. And I'm gonna check out it just so you know, like mix format check formatted dry run. This one is gonna say, hey, you don't have other code formatted. So this is what I'm going to run on my CI to make sure I didn't forget to, oops. Uh, To make sure I didn't forget to run mix format before. So this is another one that's going to fail. Um, adding format check to CI. All right, so next one will be to add dialyzer. And dialyzer has a small gotcha, in my opinion, <laughs> for, for CI, which is it's pretty slow. Like uh, the first time you gener you you run dialyzer, it's gonna build some files called plt files, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna search here. I know there there is a very nice uh, post somewhere uh, about, about running dialyzer mix dialyzer. Is it like this or I'm um, actually. No, yeah, I spelled it wrong. Dialyzer, wait, why here? Thanks, Mitchell Picky, for <laughs> putting it there. So, mix dialyzer on CI. Um, there's this tool, Dialyxir, which is uh, what I'm going to be installing to actually run dialyzer on my Elixir code. But, um, poor man's solution? No. I don't want on GitHub CI. GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions. Because I do want to fix cakes running. Oh, here, this one. So build the ultimate Elixir CI. Yeah, this one I read this these days by Dorian Carter. Uh, and uh, Dialyzer, Dialyxir. This is what I'm going to install, but um, all right, find environment variables. I'm not going to actually check this for now using view matrix. I'm not going to setting up mixed dependency cache. What is mixed dependency cache? All right, this one is important because I don't want to uh, every time uh, be downloading all the, the mixed dependencies, right? Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, the yeah, the default one already uses it. Uh, like there is already a cache here, right? And yeah, restore dependencies cache. All right, 
So next one, we install mixed dependencies. It's going to install dependencies right after. And it's going, check formatting. All right, linked with Gradle. We did configure that. Running dialyzers, checks with PLT cache. So what I'm going to do first is configure dialyzer, right? Yeah, let's install dialyzer. Dialyzer from Jeremy JH, JH. Um, right, only dev, runtime false, and um, let me push this mix EXS here. Steps.get is gonna get. And the usage is mix dialyzer. You're gonna see, like, if I run mix dialyzer here, this is gonna take like 10 to 15 minutes probably. But what's, what this is gonna do, uh, what dialyzer is, is a static typing check for Elixir. Like, you can add type annotations for functions. Like, for example, I can say here, this function, dev project, his spec, this spec is project, it's a function called project, that returns a list. And this is going to be, be, uh, be checked when I run mix dialyzer, right, uh, that the actual return of this function is a list. It's probably going to work here. I can actually be more strict. For example, I want this to be a keyword, right? a keyword list, uh, because I know this is a keyword list, like it's right here. Uh, so yeah, what I can do also is define types like this, type T uh, and say, hey, uh, type T is an atom or uh, I don't know, actually is an integer or new, right? So I can use type T here, to, you know? So yeah, that, that's what actually keyword here is. It is a type defined somewhere. Uh, if you want to actually check, you probably can go to hex docs, elixir, or even in ix, uh, yes. you can say um, H here, you can say, is it T, T, or I inspect formation, I think it's T, oops, T, uh, keyword, Uh, Prince types for the given module. All right. T and M, for example, is going to print the list of types. Uh, I think kernel, probably. No. Let's search for, for it on hex docs, which is easier. Keyword. Oh, right. Probably here, right? <laughs> Keyword. Uh, you see the, the keyword T I could use like this keyword dot T so here's the type keyword T uh, which is a key and value and the value is going to be anything right so that's that's what I expect here because the, the values are not standardized so but I could create like a keyword T uh, where I expect all the values to be integers so this way, this type, like for this, uh, the type of the return, the return of this function is going to be checked. Like uh, all the 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 values here should be integers. So this one, for example, is going to fail. Then uh, I'm going to leave it like this to show you uh, how it looks like. Uh, so the PLTs are getting pretty uh, 
right? Adding 170 modules to the Elixir Erlang. So the, the why it takes so much time, uh, the PLTs, uh, I don't remember well what a PLT means, like uh, I think T stands for table or something like that. <laughs> but the other was persist, persistent lookup table. So these are the files that save basically uh, a table of, of the types that uh, is, are going to be used to, to check against your code, your actual code. Uh, but it takes a lot of time to actually build these tables. But the first time it's, it's built is <coughs> saved to this file so that it's cached, right? And it, uh, it builds like one of these files for Erlang, one of these files for Elixir. And it builds it considering all, uh, it actually includes all your dependencies in these files, in the PLTs. So uh, they only are going to change when you add uh, new dependencies. So what this guy actually says here is, hey, let's cache these PLTs by hashing the mix lock, right? So it, it includes the, the hash on, on the mix lock for, to, to invalidate. The, the actual cache. So that's probably the same that's done on here, on the depths, right? Yeah, here. So uh, what I'm gonna do for for the the dialyzer cache is pretty much the same that's been done been done here. And yeah, now takes the status. All right, not sure what, what are those two options here. But uh, for those of you that do Elixir but don't do Dialyzer, I strongly suggest to, to use it. Uh, it. It is boring a little bit. And I, as I said, I do like that Elixir is a dynamically typed language because you can be productive, like you can speed code uh, as, as you want and it's going to compile and it's going to work and uh, you can get quite far with that. But by writing the specs, you, you can be a lot more precise, like you can get a lot of bugs that you would probably only get if you have a very decent test suite or even with a decent test suite maybe sometimes you're not gonna uh, get those bugs those small details right so you can uh it's all right so start now it's done passed successfully uh skip the necessary skips uh probably because i did change here and it's not not sure why it didn't fail all right now it should fail it didn't. Why they didn't? Is it integer? The or is it not checking? Oh, it's not checking mix CXS probably. Interesting. Let me go to somewhere else where I like my lib page live here <coughs> mount um, the params are uh, map 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 <laughs> this is gonna work here but this is not gonna work I should fail right it did fail uh, so uh, it's a bit hard to read. I agree. Uh, like the, the 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 spec return type does not match the expected return time for mount callback right behavior. So on uh, I'm I'm implementing a mount callback behavior and. Uh, it, it's marked as the implementation of that here, right? 
but the, the spec didn't match. So that's probably not a good example. <laughs> Let me go to a context. Oh, how is the name? Brokerage. All right. Here, now, finally. Add spec list transactions. Uh, a list and probably actually a keyword. And the return is going to be nil. <laughs> And yeah, you can check actual values. That that's really a nice thing because you can say, hey, the return should be okay and new, or error, and then you put the reasons that you actually expect to fail, like uh, reason one or reason two. You know, that's probably gonna fail too. That. Dialyzer. As you see, the, the next passes are pretty straightforward. Actually, uh, let's just say new here. <laughs> Let me see. Why is it not failing? As I say, I'm not a dialyzer expert. Mix compile, compile and run dialyzer again. That's quite annoying. Hey Mitchell, if you're still there and you know why is it failing, like why is it not failing? Not sure if you help. All right. So, what are the options? No compile, no check, force check. Force. Oh, it's checking the PLTs. I don't want to check the PLTs. I do want to check the... How to exit status. No check. Uh, what is it? Ignore exit status, list and use PLT, format short, format raw. PLT is up to date. All right, repo all should actually not should should be returning something else. I'm not sure what's happening. Transaction. Let's make sure this one, for example. Change set map map and the return nil this one should fail definitely yeah finally i got something to fail not sure why that one didn't fail though because repo all doesn't return nil or would it no it always return a, a, a list hmm I have to investigate there. That. Uh, so yeah, here, uh, the spec for the function does not match with the success type of the function, right? So the function is not returning what is defined on the spec. So that's the magic. Like basically, the success typing of the function 
change set would be this. This is what actually is expected to be given as parameters and this is expected to what is going to be returned. So we know here it's a extra chain set struct, right? And I do happen to know that actor chain set has a type called actor chain set dot t. Uh, it's pretty normal on on libraries that they're gonna implement this t type for structs, right? So in here, it's also probably I would want to create a t a type t that's a transaction, right? And some people do even do like something like, yeah, a transaction, the date of the transaction, the type expected here is date.t and uh, it shouldn't be new, right? Uh, if it could be new, uh, maybe something like this, but uh, the date should not be new. And so defining the types for each of those fields here, if those, uh, each of those, uh, uh, expected fields is a good thing because then uh, the the this when you do for example check uh, you send one of these fields one of these uh, attributes of the struct uh, to another function that actually expects something that's not a date uh, it's gonna fail too you know which is quite good if you don't define this, it's not gonna know, hey, uh, the date uh, key here inside this transaction structure is a date. It's gonna consider, hey, it can be anything. Uh, so as it can be anything, and you pass this to something else that accepts something, it can also be the thing that it's actually expecting. So it might not actually fail. So be more explicit can be rewarding in the sense that you're gonna get more warnings <laughs> uh, transaction structs because of course module stylizer all right so uh, this didn't fail now uh, but what if it, I for example expect it to be a T here because it, it should be it should be a uh, t, but I do change this one to integer. Let's see. It should fail, yeah, because the spec function does not match the success typing. The success typing is uh, the the first part of the parameter is this, but the second part should be invalid. Is it invalid? or a struct known atom binary. So, uh, all, all right, uh, where is this coming from, right? Just so you know. Uh, basically, this is coming from uh, where are you actually using this parameter, all right? So, where are you actually using the second parameter, at the in the cast function? This cast function is imported from act of change set. So, I'm gonna go to act of change set here and it's not gonna go so I'm gonna start ix minus s mix and say ecto dot change set dot cast that's the function right and let me show you the spec for this function when you do help for it it actually prints the spec so as you can see uh, the first parameter is this right the actor schema T or a T or uh, data types. And the second parameter is this. And the third parameter is a keyword list. The third parameter is a keyword list because it's a list. Is it? No, this is the fourth parameter, the opts, right? The third parameter is permitted here, a list of atoms. Yeah, it is a list of atoms. This is, the stream is constantly crashing for me. I'll try to catch you some other time. Oh, is it just for you? Yeah, I guess it's just for you, Mitchell. Oh, oh, sorry to see you go, man. Yeah, I guess probably your connection. In here it says uh, no frame drops. 
seven only seven slow frames uh yeah uh but anyways thank you for for watching for a little while and yeah uh it's really nice to to get some known people here like some people that i at least heard the name before and yeah keep keep up with the good work uh you definitely helped me a lot of times and i'm sure other people would also thank you <clears throat> so yeah see you uh anyway continuing i am just gonna open my live stream my phone so i can see how many of you are out there because i can't actually see yeah two viewers it's right all right so yeah anyway uh, so as you as i was talking uh the second parameter here this part of the check the invalid part of the check if you actually see this if you actually check this is this part right uh, it doesn't sometimes it doesn't look exactly like it because this is the kind of a, the Erlang version of it <laughs> you know like this for example struct known uh, is the Mm, map match here is it or this one right some uh, there, there are some crazy translations but yeah that the, the first thing uh, wh when you get a warning on dialyzer uh, the first thing you should you should check is like first ignore the warning and go to the spec, check the spec, and check the functions that are called uh, using the parameters. And like if what actually doesn't match is the return, uh, the, the, as you saw, the warning is the same. If what, uh, it doesn't actually say what of this doesn't match. But anyway, in here, the attributes, I know I expect a map to, uh, to be given here, right? And and a map would match with one of this, <coughs> one of this stuff. So if I give a map here, it's not gonna fail. Right? So, but if I, if someone calls the, the change set, for example, let's go to the brokerage and check the change set, like transaction change set. And instead of uh, a list, uh, um, a map, I send, for example, a list. This should fail also on dialyzer because you're calling a function that expects a map as the second parameter and you're sending a list, right? So yeah, the function call will not succeed because you sent a list uh, and it actually expects invalid, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> All right. What if I send invalid? Now it's time for some explore exploration. It didn't. It didn't succeed because it breaks the contract. The contract that I did uh, ex uh, explicitly put there. But if I say, hey, He also expects invalid. For example, you're done. Uh, so, but I don't, I don't expect it to be invalid. 
what expects it to be valid is cached. But I can actually make a, a stricter uh, function here because this typing here is a subset of the types that this accepts, right? So it's going to match. All right, that's perfect. Configure dialyzer um, to dialyzer. So next step is to add dialyzer to CI. And then mix um, blah, 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 blah. Right, first uh, I want to configure here. Uh, on mix exs the way that Dorian actually put there mix exs mm -hmm. wait what copy so what he's configuring here is the place that the dialyzer plts are going to be placed <laughs> basically mm -hmm. so it's going to be placed on pre plts what i'm going to do also is to move actually Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Let's run dialyzer again. It's going to build a new POT, which is going to take the same amount of. All right. MKDIR prev PLTs. And I'm going to touch a prev PLTs keep. Um, changing PLTs directory but uh, now I'm gonna to add a git ignore to that directory because I don't want to commit it right yeah I don't want to commit the PLTs uh, uh, what I uh, oh did ignore PLTs as I did already commit, it's not going uh, ignoring PLT files actually. How about PLT better, right? ACA, that's a uh, add commit amend, that's what ACA stands for. <coughs> AC add commit. <laughs> but I have, I have a lot of uh, aliases. So this is then what I put on my CI config, my CI workflow, workflow PR. And I'm gonna run, although it's slow, it's not gonna be slow every time. That's why I'm putting it on my GitHub, uh, the, the PRCI. So I'm putting it after installing dependencies, run credo. Uh, so it's running dialyzer, uh, probably after credo, yeah. Retrieve PLT cache. I'm gonna use cache v2 because it's a new version. I don't need the ID. Uh, the path is brief PLT is the one that I created now. And I'm going to use the same uh, dialyzer. Uh, another key is ju just to make it different from the depths. 
and restore keys lizer right uh, so retrieve uh, restore Realizer cache um, create PLTs yeah PLTs let's call it PLTs there's no point of actually and then run dialyzer without the PLTs I don't need to MCAD MKD here because I did commit that uh, set PLT PLT cache outputs cache hit Oh, it only creates the PLTs if there isn't a cache hit. If there is a cache hit from here, it's gonna skip this this thing here. Okay. I mean, you could do just this with here because this is going to to use the PLTs, but I like this because... Uh, do I like this? <laughs> the PLTs are not going to be generated, neither checked this way. If the cache for some reason, the reason is not invalidated correctly. I'm not gonna even, I'm not even gonna check. Is there a way to actually just check and fail instead of check and generating? Because if you uh, the the when mix you run mix dialyzer with no no check option, it's gonna check. And if the PLT is invalid, it's going to trigger a PLT creation, right? So what I want to do is not to trigger PLT creation, but actually fail if the PLT is invalid. That should get, get me. But yeah, let's mix help dialyzer, because then uh, we can actually check that. Maybe there is like no compile, no check, right? Force check, force PLT check also if log file isn't changed, useful when dealing with local depths. Hmm. Ignore XC status, listen, use filters. PLT only will require PLT as an exit format. Hmm. All right, so the check is going to execute, as for this documentation, the check is only going to execute if the mix lock, if the lock file is changed. So, so there's actually no point in separating this and say no check. Right? And how status is the actual default there's no point on the hot text status right probably this post from Dorian is a little bit outdated when he did create it uh, May 21 uh, last year so it's been a while right and uh, right Yeah, commit then. Add dialyzer to CI. I see no CI. You push. All right. So let's see what we've done so far on our PR. Is it this? Yeah, this is the PR. This is the progress. More tools. <coughs> the commits should 
key. So we added credit, credo, we added credo to CI, uh, we added the format check to CI, the formatter gets delivered with uh, Elixir, just in case you do not know, there is a default Elixir formatter that formats your code uh, to a given kind of, uh, to the default style guide for Elixir, got introduced on Elixir 1.7, I guess, or so. Uh, then we configured Dialyzer, we changed the PLTs directory, uh, we ignored add the PLT files to the git ignore, and then we added Dialyzer to CI. So what is actually failing? Let's see. Check formatted, right? <laughs> um, mix format. The AC ran mix format. Did I push? Yeah, I did push. Mm -hmm. Next one. Oops. Mix format. Running the checks. I'm. I'm thinking maybe I'm separating different jobs for, for this, but maybe in the future. Gonna run Credo. It's probably gonna fail, right? Because Credo is configured with the strict thing thingy there. Yeah, anyway, I'm, I know it's going to fail because if I run mix credo here, it's, it's going to fail. Um, there are 48 code readability issues. Well, let's start by adding the module tags here, right? Why not? So telemetry, what I'm going to do is to run mix credo from here because then it's going to be sent to the quick fix module tag doc module doc yeah transaction live index uh, what i'm going to do is to add add module doc files to most stuff i'm just because Basically, not sure if you know, but Elixir has this module doc and add doc tags uh, uh, to, to generate documentation. And you can access this documentation on IEX using the h function, like h enum. This is gonna print the module doc for the add module doc for enum and h and um, dot count, for example, it's going to print the, the doc for the count function. So uh, the add module doc files, what's going to happen is if the function, the, the, the method doesn't have the, the module have the files, when you send h for that module, it's not going to print anything. But also there is this library x doc right that i'm going to install in this project just to to show you off so x doc uh, 1.10 or later this one
mix when I run mix docs. All right, git mix depth dot get. So I run mix docs. Is it mix docs or mix doc? Mix docs. So as you see, it generated the doc index HTML and the docs coins EPUB. These are the HTML and EPUB formats of the documentation. The same ones that are posted automatically for all the the libraries that are posted for or uh, posted to Hex package manager. So if I open doc index, this is the API reference for my my thingy there. So if I go here, like for example, I don't want to show coins repo documentation and on the documentation, all I have to do is to go to repo at module doc uh, and say false, right? That's why I say I, I'm going to put at module doc false for pretty much most almost every all right i have to regenerate <laughs> oops regenerate and when i refresh repo is gone right so what i'm saying i'm going to 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 remove like to add module doc files for pretty much everything because i only want to to document the stuff that should actually be used, should actually be used by, for example, new developers, you know. So, for example, the, the brokerage context uh, is something that should be used from uh, the, the, the controllers. So that's something I think deserves documentation. So the coins domain thing is uh, not, not sure if this, for example, should be documented because um like why <laughs> right because uh there's nothing inside coins only module doc uh so what i'm going to do is to remove this one too right that's why i think module docs even the module doc files having module doc files on pretty much almost everything is still valuable right because it's gonna clean up your documentation there. Uh, one thing, one one detail though is, for example, on coins transaction, uh, which is a schema. Uh, I'm gonna put module doc false because I don't want to document the schema because here I just it's just a data structure, right? Uh, but what I want to document probably is the doc here. So what happens, for example, this generates a chain set or builds a chain set for uh, operations on top of transactions. Uh, actually, that changes ATTRs. So good documentation actually mention the parameters that gi that are given uh, on the on the function. So right, that changes after two years the after two years from transaction. Right, this this is a good documentation, and also a good documentation would say always return. Uh, to change set and also is gonna give examples for example and the examples you can write for example like this ix like as if you were using on ix and change set and then you send a transaction 
and a list of attributes like date um, to the the 2020 10 amount 10 cents actually ten dollars maybe this is not gonna pass but anyways uh, notes it's not gonna send notes because it's not required and account ID one I don't know and it's gonna return uh, next to dot change set where changes have this right uh, this this is an example of a good documentation because you have multiple like it mentions all the, the parameters that you give to to this so uh, the, the person that's gonna use it actually knows what's uh, what's the, the expected uh, behavior of the function right uh, also mentions what is the return and if in this case it always returns the the same thing but why, why is it like why mentioning this if you already have this right you should probably be questioning uh, because sometimes it's not always that it's going to return the same thing like for some example let me see an example of um, age file dot right for example I do know that file dot right it returns okay if it passed but error posix if it didn't just by looking at this I know hey uh, it returns okay or error in posix but I can't actually tell hey uh, what posix is of course I could do like t uh, file dot posix and it's gonna say hey file.posix is equals to file.posix and then I do the file.posix and this is the list of things but it's still pretty clear what <laughs> what the hell are this actual uh, stuff here so as you see in the documentation for Elixir there is uh, some missions like typical error reasons are in no end for a company file that does not exist like it actually mentions the possible returns and uh, the most common problems that you probably are going to find. So uh, it doesn't give all the details, but it gives some of the details. And that's, that's pretty cool, right? And finally, why examples, right? Why having examples? So basically because you can. <laughs> Basically, because you can post an example here, because because this is a pure function, it's even possible to actually run these examples and check if this actually works. Uh, let me show you. I just created the the transaction test for this module, and I'm gonna do import coins dot brokerage dot transaction test or actually transaction and I'm going to, to do x uh, doc test true is it doc test true or just doc test I always forget why isn't my coc vim working All right, let's search on hex docs. Uh, hex docs x unit doc tests and it expects two parameters. All right, the module and the opts. The opts can be accept only import. All ah, right, I can do this then. Doc test points. 
brokerage dot transaction and import true this is going to import the we're doing it automatically right This is not feasible when there is a clash with the module like kernel. In this case, this import should be set to false and full, and a full module function construct should be used. Change set, though, is not that case. So, actually, I may actually build this because I do like to to be explicit right oops what I'm going to do this here Because then I can uh, use as uh, just transaction here, and then if I run this test here, what it's gonna actually check is uh, it's gonna execute this function passing, uh, and it went well, like it's six, it succeeded, and. Uh, it's going to pass this as the first parameter and this as the second parameter and it's going to expect it to match with this right to actually match no uh to be exactly this right uh what i can say for example is uh i expected the changes to be valid true but I also can test another thing, uh, like I'm gonna send something invalid, and then uh, valid should be false. I'm gonna, whoops. And run the doc test and it failed because why because here's the dust doc test that failed transaction chain set the empty list uh, is valid false it is valid false but as you see it's compared using equals 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 which is sets every every single uh, attribute from inside the the struct to be uh, defined there so and the errors are not defined Right, so as you can see here, the error is not defined. I'm going to say, let me copy the here. Oops, errors is a list. Is this going to work now? Uh, right, valid, valid false thing is here, but uh, data new is the problem. Uh, zero data. Transaction. And why the other one did pass? Like, uh, I'm not sure. I didn't. <laughs> it didn't actually. To new. Right. Uh, code transaction chain set uh, equals the left side is what I did 
send the right side is what they have data is empty values oh there's a lot of stuff saved on all right both of them actually failed yeah uh, here uh, both of them failed because of the data because of a lot of stuff so what I can do and I'm going to do oh first I'm going to break lines here because this is kind of annoying oops Right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install another tool. <laughs> That's the next tool of the day, which is called Mix Test Watch from LPU. Uh, this one. Is something for the TDD freaks not that I, I'm one but I would like to be <laughs> I never got actually time to be a TDD East but I kind of love the the idea but yeah mix depths get what this is is uh, a task that you can run mix test watch and it's gonna rerun It's going to rerun every test every time you actually you actually change something. Oh, the, the problem is money amount here. Uh, right. You see, it did rerun. Uh, right. So the types here, this is pretty. Hmm. The types, the params, the required stuff. I don't like to put that many stuff on so yeah what I'm going to do instead of checking the whole structure right I only want to check this too basically so I can do ix so and change the, save this to a change set, right? And then change set dot valid should return true. And change set dot changes should return this. And done. So, and then for this one, change set dot valid should return false and change set dot errors should return this. Oh, it's almost four o'clock. IX changes, it changes, 
equals let me copy these changes here so how, how it works with the different like uh, every group here is a test like it's a doc test uh, like it's a different example so it's a different test is going to be executed parallelly so that's why we have two doc tests here it's failing uh, 34 transaction 34 right here I'm going to I think I do have do not disturb yeah all right so as you can see two dot tests uh, and this if I do regenerate for example uh, mixed docs When I go there on my documentation, not this one, this one. Uh, I. All oh, right, actually, never mind because I just remembered. Uh, open doc index, right? So if I go here, there should not be coins brokerage transaction. Why? Because the actual transaction has module fa doc false. But the doc is here and there is this tests, right? So where does this fall? Basically in here, uh, if you run ix minus s mix and you run help for uh, coins dot brokerage dot transaction it's gonna say no documentation but for change that there it is the documentation for this method that is public is here and everything is in here uh, if you try out like to do something like this and change in here it's not gonna work probably right the transaction the file doesn't exist. It doesn't even generate the file for that module. Uh, some people say, hey, but uh, why do you want this documentation here but not there? Uh, I mean, it's always good to have the documentation even in, in the code. Like sometimes you're doing something and hey, what this functionality does, uh, like when, when you're in another place like the brokerage, and you say, hey, what does this tr transaction change set do? You just have to actually go to the definition of this file, which is not working. I'm going to do this. Brokerage, change set. TLC Vim, definition of found, over not found really not sure what's happening sometimes coc just stops working for me i don't know why this is something related to the configurations id anyway you can go there on this you know the al alias is here this is the module so if you go to the module definition uh, you're gonna see hey oh this is documentation for for this function and the, the, good be, the good thing about the doc tests is, is that if you change uh, the way we, it works somehow, for example, hey, now notes uh, are, notes is a required field, right? I change the, the, the behavior of this function and this change of behavior actually makes my, my doc test invalid, right? Because the changes here doesn't actually include a notes field and it's required now so valid is not true valid should be false and indeed if i go there and check uh, here it says yeah that the valid false even the invalid one the the other 
actually failed too because uh, it, the notes can't be blank thing is not in here, right? So yeah, this, this is a reason to actually use doc tests, right? And uh, you, the kind of the documentation is a bonus. The, the actual validation of the documentation, like is something good per se, right? So, but um, notes is not required <laughs> and everything should go. All right, mix test dot watch, you can do stale in here. So if you change something, for example, let's change the transaction, it's only gonna re-execute the, the, the ones that got affected by that. So it didn't execute all 32 tests, it did only 29. Uh, let me try, try out, for example, to page live HTML, I changed page live HTML, it's gonna only say, hey, recompiled, no stale tests, right? Because there, there's no test testing this actual file here. Right. Um, Yeah, that's uh, that's it, I guess, for today. And oh. all right, I guess uh, I'm just gonna publish this then and call it a day. Uh, I'm not sure even if I am going to publish it right now. And yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, my wife is just pinging me. I know, I know you need me right now. Uh, I just, just, I'm just closing the the live stream, honey. Just a little bit. Of uh, adding docs for trim set and some more tools. That's it. So yeah, everyone, thank you for watching uh, one more live stream and yeah, see you in the next one, which is probably going to be next Friday. See ya.